have had a few comments, questions of late asking about the bind method, how to use it and what it does. We're going to focus in this tutorial on part one of explaining bind, which will have to do with the binding of this. The next tutorial will cover part two, which will focus on partial application. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember to check out the discount links to all my courses in the description. I really appreciate the support. In the Advanced Topics course, for example, we dive into the value of this and bind in a lot of detail. Also, if you would like, there are other ways to support the channel, which are linked to in the description. All right, now the first thing we need to deal with when talking about bind is to explain what it does. So its primary purpose is to bind a function to an object. And this is what we will be talking about most in this tutorial. But it can also bind arguments to a function. We will deal with that more in part two. But first it's important to note that the end result of bind, what bind returns, is a function. Let's look at that first. I'm going to use a console just to show that part. So we'll open that up and I wanted to find a function. Simple function test and all this function is going to do is to log to the console like this. There's our function. I'll press return. Now we have that function defined. Now let's go ahead and see how bind, what bind does when we use it on this function. So I'm going to declare a variable, test2. And I'm going to set that equal to test.bind. And I'm not going to pass in any arguments to bind. This is not normally how you would use bind, but allow me to illustrate something. Now when I press return, nothing happens, but now when we run test2, when I invoke test2, notice that it returns exactly what we defined for test. So basically test.bind here returned a function. And test2 references that function. So when we invoke it, it is running that function that was returned by bind. We're getting the same results, but remember this is returning a function. It's a new function. Now, bind also takes arguments. And the first argument that you can pass into bind is an object. This object is a way to bind the property of this. That can be important when the this binding is lost, which can happen. Or it could be used to associate a function with a different object, a different this binding. Okay, now we need to look at some more code in order to illustrate this part of bind. So here I have two functions. The first function, user1, just has a simple name property set to Lynette. User2 also has a name property. It's set to Steven, but also has a greet method. And all this greet method does is log to the console, the word hello, and then the name. And the way it's grabbing the name is using this.name. So pretty simple. Let's go ahead and look at what user2.greet returns. If we invoke it, hello, Steven. That's what we'd expect. This, in the case here, refers to the object, user2. And so this.name grabs this property right here and displays it to the console. So that's doing what we expect. Now, let's just modify things a bit here. Let's add something else for invoking this function. We're going to use set timeout to do that. Set timeout will invoke a function, but it does it after a certain amount of time. So let's go ahead and put that in. Here's a function we want to invoke, user2.greet. Put that in, comma, and then we're going to do it after one second. So 1000 milliseconds equals a second. Let's go ahead and save that. We'll jump out here to the console. Let me refresh. After a second, notice we get the word hello, but we do not get Steven. That's not showing up. So why the difference? What's going on here? Well, let me add something to this. 
and we'll be able to see what the difference is. So I'm going to do whoops console.log this like that. I'm going to save that. And let's go ahead and see what set timeout gives us. Notice set timeout gives us the window object. That's what this refers to is the global object. Now let's see what this refers to if we do user two dot greet. Notice it refers to the object itself. So that's what's happening. That's why with set timeout we don't get Stephen as a part of the console log statement because the this binding has been lost. Or another way to say it, this binding becomes the global object. Now there's a couple ways that we can deal with this problem. One is by creating a wrapper function inside a set timeout and the other is by using bind. Let me show you the wrapper function first. So the function that set timeout is going to invoke will be an anonymous function that I'm declaring right here inside of set timeout. This is our wrapper function. And then what that wrapper function is going to do is it's going to invoke user two dot greet and put the end curly brace here. So this will solve the problem because set timeout will invoke this function. That function will have the global object as this binding, but it will then, as it runs, invoke greet from user two. Let's go ahead and look at that. And there we get that, that works for us. Let me go ahead and comment out console.log this. So that is one way to deal with it. Now let's look at a second way. This is using bind. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function and we're going to bind user two as an object to that function so that it doesn't get lost when it's using set timeout. So we do let greet is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to set that to user two dot greet that's the function dot bind here's where we use bind and I'm going to pass in user 2 as the first parameter so this is the object I'm passing in and this object will be bound to the function that's returned here so we don't lose that this binding. Now, if we set up set timeout, and I just pass in greet, that's all, and 1000, so we're doing the same thing there, what do we get? Save that, and let's go ahead and refresh here. They'll both come back after one second, and they both display hello Steven. So both methods work for us. So why bother with binding? Well, I need to show you that there is a difference, okay, between the two. And that difference is this one here will invoke this method after a second has passed. This one here binds the object as it is at this point in time, right here. It binds it at that point in time and then even after a second pass, it's displaying information based upon that point in time. Now here's a way we can see the difference. If I make a change to user two on this line, like this, user two dot greet, change that function. We'll just change what it does very simply. So it's going to do hi instead of hello. Big difference, important difference. So basically what's going to happen as this code executes, it's going to run this set timeout. The timer will start counting. It'll set up this new function, greet, using bind. It will run this set timeout. The timer will start counting. And then we change user two right here. We change the greet method to user two so that it logs hi instead of hello. What's going to happen is this one's going to display hi 
this one will display hello because this is bound user two is bound at the point in time it currently is at when this line is executed where this one it invokes the method after the second has passed well within that second we made a change to that method so this illustrates the difference between these two and that's important to understand so you know which one you're going to use you know which one you want to use let's go ahead and save that and we'll take a look at it and there we go hi Stephen hello Stephen so that's the difference that we said would happen now one more possible application of bind I want to show you since we pass in an object as the this binding right here couldn't we make that any object couldn't we make it user one well sure let's go ahead and take a look at how we would do that so I'm going to call this greet one and we're going to set that equal to user two dot greet dot bind and now we're going to pass in user one and so now this is going to return a function here that is bound to user one to this object here so let's look at what that returns for us there's our stuff that we did before but now let's do greet one and notice it says hi Lynette so it's bound to that user one object something else to be aware of with this binding using the bind method now bind can also receive arguments that are bound to the resulting function as well so the first parameter is the object any parameter beyond that are the arguments that are passed in or that are bound to that function and will be used whenever it is invoked and in part two we're going to look at that feature of bind in more detail all right please hit the like button and subscribe and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section click the bell button to, not to be notified about new releases i release a new tutorial each week at least i try to and once again thanks for watching